Hi everybody and welcome to another studio session. I've looked into my stats on YouTube and it turns out that the most popular search term that leads to people discovering this channel is Volca Sample. So that's what I'm going to use today. A lot of people in the past asked me for a tutorial on this little device and I actually had one recorded but then my laptop died and the tutorial died alongside with the hard drive that failed and by the time I was able to record another tutorial the hype train on the Volca sample was actually going quite strong and the tutorial from my part would be redundant. And today's video is not a tutorial, I'm just going to show you my process of how I approach working with this little device. I'm going to be working with batteries because uh, the power supply creates some weird interference with my microphone. So for those of you who don't know, my channel actually started getting attention as soon as I started uploading videos with the Volca sample. And many people were surprised of what I'm able to achieve with this little machine. I don't think it's that difficult, it just requires a little bit of planning. And today we're heading into the video without any plans. I wanted to put on some samples on it, but then I remember that the last sample pack that I've put on it is the inspiration kit that's available on my Patreon page. And I swore by the fact that you can make full tracks with just the sample pack and I'm on a mission to prove it over and over again. The way I do it, I start on the number one, but I don't use it for kicks. I usually put a melodic sample on there and I'm trying to find something that will inspire me. I'm messing with the settings, I'm trying different uh, combinations of parameters. That decides if I want to go for something more trip hop, more techno, more ambient. So yeah, let's just find something. Okay, that may be a start of something. Uh, I barely remember how to use it. <laughs> it's been a while. And just like that, we have our first layer. Okay, how about we go back to this and pitch it down another octave. What sample slot was this? 58. So if I go to 58 right now, we can put it on, uh, for example, halfway through the bar. And just like that, we have something textural. And let's turn on the motion sequencing. And it already starts taking shape a little bit, right? It's just three elements right now, but it already creates an atmosphere that will work perfectly in a trip hop context. And let's keep looking for other parts that may work with this. Right, so we're about to place some drums and the way that I do it is that I place my kick on the slot number 10 and my snare on the slot number 9. I'm doing that because those two slots are placed into what's called a choke group. That means that basically the sounds will interrupt each other. And as you can see they cannot play simultaneously. And that may become a problem if I wanted to put some melodic elements on those tracks. But since the kick and snare don't really interact in that way, then that frees me eight other slots for making melodic parts. Okay, let's have a contrast between large kick and a small snare. Alright, and 
let's go in here and pan it a little bit. All right, so we have two slots left. And what I'm thinking of is adding more rhythmic elements because it's not like the Volca sample sequencer will allow me for some elaborate melody and whatever I will program will get stale rather quickly. I'm thinking about adding some more weird rhythmic elements that will accentuate the wonky groove. So yeah, let's just look for some sounds. I think this might be interesting. Let's place it randomly. Or actually, let's pitch this down. And let's start panning some of these as well. right now we've been listening to the same thing over and over on repeat so let's just have a little bit of fun with it and see if it needs anything more or if we should call it a day By the end of that session, I wasn't very satisfied with what I've made. The sequence itself is fine, but it lacks variation, it lacks basically any sort of movement, it's just a little loop without much substance to it. And I think that performing with the Volca sample is very limited, because to structure a full track on it, it requires a lot of effort, and it's just quite tedious and limited, to be absolutely honest. So that's why I recorded separate stems into Reaper. And right now I'm just going to turn it into a full blown trip of track. So yeah, let's start working on it. All right, so right now I'm just going to EQ it a little bit, clean it up. One of the features that I miss on the Volca sample is high pass filter, so I can cut down the lows. Listen to how much of a difference this simple cut makes. It leaves so much more space for a bass line, right? And for the kick and for everything. Things in the Volca sample can get very muddy just because of lacking the proper low cut. Right, so after adding some EQ, I'm now ready to move it over and start arranging it a little bit. So I'm just going to get one of the elements and start with that, see where that takes me. And yeah, let's duplicate that. Yeah, let's give it a little bit more space. And I think we can introduce the drums over here. Let's take our bass as well. Okay, so what I think right now is that we could change this bass, just cut it out like that and then stretch it. And one other thing is that we can start adding effects to 
the things that we recorded from the Volca sample just to make it a little bit more varied. So for example, in the intro, I could add something like a phaser. Okay, I think I like this phaser even when the beat drops, so we can keep it. I think the snare lacks a little bit of character, so let's try and add some distortion to it. I think that the beat drop is a little bit sudden, so let's try introducing the bass first. Let's get rid of that. Oh, how about uh, we take the bass and stop it for a second. Yeah, right now it doesn't have much impact, but we can work with that. Definitely what it needs is a crush symbol. Honestly, I like that symbol and I think that I will use it as an accent sometimes on some of the snares. I'm just going to figure out which exact snare would I like to accent with it. All right, so I'm just going to add some distortion to the kick to beef it up a little bit. It might get loud, so I'm just going to lower it. Okay, so here is the kick without the effects. And here is the kick with the effects. It's a lot more beefy, right? And okay, back to composing. So we have that and having that, we can start introducing this thing a bit later on, repeat it, uh, put a crush over here. Okay, definitely some reverb and delay going into that. I think that we can get away with using just a little bit of reverb. Yeah, sounds already way better. Let's mess with it a little bit. Maybe let's mess with the pitch of it. Let's stretch it just a little bit. So what else can we do? I usually like to add a folder that I call EQ. It's more like a master bus for me. And I call this folder that because usually there's a equalizer on it. Surprise, surprise. Uh, that has a high cut and a low cut. So I can just manipulate every single thing at the same time. For example, in the beginning, we can make this pad even thinner than it was and start getting a little bit more bassy. And that hits way harder when it comes in, right? How about we try to put that lower reverse crash over here in that silence to lead us into the next sequence. That's quite nice. I'm just going to fade it in. Maybe a linear fade. Yeah, okay, I like it. And I often like to mess with the drums at the end of a bar as well, because that just creates some more dynamic in your tracks. So for example, I can take this one kick that's slightly muted and I can repeat it a few times. And I can shift that snare over here. Okay, maybe let's do it here. Okay, now let's change the grid and add those two snares. Okay, that's a little bit overkill, okay. Let's keep it at that, maybe let's stretch this snare. 
and maybe let's add a pitch envelope going downwards. Okay, at this point, I think that when we have the context of the track, we can start compressing the drums to really bring them to life a little bit. Okay, so we have our drums dialed in a little bit, we have the mics cleaned up a little bit, and we have a little bit of a composition going, so right now we're going to try and head into a break. So let's get rid of all of those drums. Sounds nice. Over here, when this little section will repeat for the third and fourth time, I would like to introduce a new instrument. I haven't decided yet what I would like to do here. I definitely see myself adding something else to this entire composition. I'm thinking about using this high accent and for example I can create a new track, duplicate it, zoom in so I can see the waveform a little better and I can for example take just this little bit and stretch it out like this then go here and use the re algorithm to stretch it And that sounds like a pad already, but let's go to the re-pitch and let's put it an octave higher. We can, for example, start fading it in. Let's see how that sounds. Alright, then we have this string added. I'm thinking about messing a little bit with the drum pattern, so when it comes back it's a little bit different. Okay, this little transition is a little bit wacky. Okay, let's shift it a little bit. Let's make it a little bit snappier. Yeah, okay. So we have that. I think that we can actually get the distortion plugin and put it on the bass and then just filter out the distortion. Alright, I think like this is going somewhere, but currently I've been at it for an hour and a half, so <laughs> my ears are a little bit tired of hearing the same loop over and over again. I'm going to take a break. I don't know if I will film the rest of the process. And that's where my camera stopped recording because it ran out of memory. So needless to say, I haven't filmed the rest of the session. It's time to wrap up this video because I have no more to show. But if you would still like to see more, there's an extended version of this video over on Patreon. It shows a little bit more of the sound design process, some of the mixing, some of the ideas that didn't necessarily make the cut. It's nothing too in-depth, it's not like a full tutorial, but it still shows a little bit of my thought process when working and stuff like that. So if that's your thing, consider supporting me on there. And if not, to support this channel you can Click the like button, leave me a comment, subscribe, it helps with the algorithm, it keeps me motivated, it's a win-win. So yeah, I really hope that you've enjoyed your time here and I will see you next time. Take care.